designed to punish it was created to kill it was meant to showcase earthly power on the side of a hill it was wood and rope it was hammer and nails it was degradation then death and it never failed it was chosen to stop the Christ, to erase the message he taught. It was the bitter end of Jesus. At least, that's what they thought. It was intended to defeat, to put down, to make the disciples give up. But instead, it became the symbol of God's love. The icon of death became the icon of true living. What once marked the end is now the mark of the beginning, a mark of forgiveness, of new life, of new birth. What began at Calvary now covers the earth, over cities, over hospitals, through the streets, through homes. The picture of God's sacrifice is our picture of hope, the lasting image of our Savior and salvation's great cost. This is more than a symbol. This is the cross. like I've spent my whole life trying to be someone else in this world of expectations where value lies in what others want you to be 
I've become everything this world demands of me. And so I've buried my truth, and I've hidden my soul away. I've hidden my deepest urges, stilled the dancing in my feet, hushed the music that swells through my spirit, ignored the dreams that cry to be free. I've locked up my struggles for fear of upset, cast off my honesty in case I offend, covered up my questions with fervent prayers, filled the silence with resounding songs, denied my pain, stopped my tears, silenced my screams in a world that deems them indecent. I've patched up my brokenness with busyness, gagged my fears with postures of faith, while in reality my head is swimming with doubts. And I hide, I hide, pretending to be someone who's got it all figured out. But when the doors are closed and the pressures flee, there is one who comes to me, calling to those places I've buried and erased, where my longings lie tethered in shame, and a voice that's forgotten how to speak and my shattered self-belief, and my thirsting soul crying to be free. And it is here that love breathes, on the embers of a fading flame, drawing the mask from my face, speaking my true name, and calling to my soul to rise again. Because love doesn't cover up weakness, but embraces those that life has beaten. Love lets tears flow freely. Love laments richly the pain of living. Love speaks out fears with no fear of opinion. Love accepts that sometimes love is forsaken. Love wears the wounds as signs of greatness. Love holds the wrongs. Love sings its truest song. Love dances like a child. Love dreams fiercely, wildly, with no need to impress. For love knows its magnificence and shows it to the world. Love holds me, speaks to me, and this is what love says. I want you as you are child of grace come out from the shadows and show me your face look into my gaze and see yourself redeemed Never 
ever be discouraged when we take it to the Lord in prayer. Some things we have not because we act not when Good evening. My name is Keisha Guyan, and tonight I'm praying for the lost in our community. Can we please all bow our heads? Father God, I'm asking for your blessing on the lost in our community, those who are in need and those who have plenty, those who are dabbling in other religions and those who are atheists, those who have not heard of you and those who have rejected you. We know by your word that they all need Jesus. You are the only way to life and hope. You are the only way to truth. You are the only way to light and an illuminated path. Lord, please reveal yourself to them in a mighty way. Even during this week, please bring redemption to the lost through our Easter activities your word assures us that if we lift you up, you will draw them unto you. So be exalted, Lord, and bring the lost in our community to the saving hope of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Continue our concert of prayer. Could you just stand with us as we sing, Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. God, here we are to pray and say that you are our God. Light of the world, you step down into dark. Open my eyes, let me see beauty that makes this heart adore you. All for a life spent with you. God, here I am to worship.
My name is Genesis, and I'm going to be praying for the sick. Lord, you are a healer, a source of hope, and the Prince of Peace. This is who you are according to your word. So I pray that you will be each of these according to your will. For those who are sick, I pray you bring healing and good doctors and care as you will. I pray that you would turn bleak outlooks around completely according to your will. I pray you would bring hope in the midst of pain and waiting and test and diagnosis. I pray that you would bring peace where healing is delayed or where the pain is strong. And even when the healing is not coming on the side of eternity, God, you love the sick more than we do. You love them better than we do. So we trust them to your will. We trust you for healing, hope, and peace. Amen. Of the goodness of the goodness 
goodness of the goodness of God. Sing all my life, all my life you have been faithful. Sing all my life, all my life you have been so, so good, so good. Every breath. And I'm praying for the hopeless. Lord, what a difficult world we live in. In this world that is marred by the effects of sin, there is so much despair. Sickness ravages our body. Hatred tears down communities. Conflict destroys relationships. Dreams fall short. Many have lost hope. But you, O oh Lord, are the source of hope. And I pray that your power and light is infectious in this world. I pray you turn back depression with hope and joy. I pray that you turn back pain with healing and provision. I pray you overcome this unity with love that you lavish on your people to the point that it overflows on everyone we come in contact with. Lord. We pray that your light shines so brightly in this dark world that the forces of evil draw back even at the mention of your name. In a world that needs hope, we pray that believer and unbeliever alike find the assurance of hope in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Every hour I need you. Oh, bless us now. God, as we come to you. Lord, you are so Don't 
My name is Karita, and I'm praying for the neighbors and co-workers. Lord, we pray to you day in and day out. We pray for family. We pray for friends. We pray for those in need to know you, but often these prayers can leave out our neighbors and co-workers who we see each day. Lord, give us your eyes and your heart for them. We pray that you impact them and draw them unto you. But God, we pray that you would use us to do it. Help our conversations be about more than work assignments and lawn treatments and sports scores. Let us be less concerned with Neighborhood Watch and more concerned with Eternal Life Watch. Help us to love them better, forgive them quicker, and pray with them rather than waiting until later to pray for them. Use us to put so much of your influence in their lives that a passion to know you grows deep within them. We pray for our neighbors and coworkers, and we pray that you use us to meet the need. Amen. Hold up their hands. And let's say to your neighbor, say, I need you. Come on, say to your neighbor, I need you. Say, you need me. So we're all apart. Come on, I don't hear. Come on again. Say, I need you. Say, you need me. So we're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Come on, say, agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. Say, I pray for you. You pray for me. Come on, say, I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. 
I love you. I need you to survive.
And I will be praying for our local church communities. So won't you join me? Father, I just want to thank you for just placing us in this community, in the city of Menifee and surrounding cities, Father. Before you, I put all pastors of every church body close to us in our local communities, God. Asking you that you give them strength. That you give us unity as your body of Christ. Unite us as one so that we can make, make an impact in our local communities, Father. Let us be churches that are necessary. Let us be a light in a dark world. Let us be the image of your son to those that don't know you. Oh, Father, I pray for every church in our local community. Let us be truly your hands and feet, God. Empower us with your Holy Spirit. Let us turn back to our first love. Let us be wise in the way that we conduct ourselves to our communities, Father. Let us be that open Bible that some will never be able to read. Father, empower us to be your ambassadors, to be ministers of reconciliation, Father. I ask you that you rebuke any spirit of envy, any spirit of jealousy, of any conflict, Father, that wants the enemy wants to bring about within your body. We can't be one without each other. So I put our local church communities in your hands. Let us be one as you and your son are one. In Jesus' name I pray. Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world would, could, and even should do. Because Jesus, at the beginning of time, at the end of time, the first and the last, He should, and He is, the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all Jesus at the center of it all from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus Jesus say Jesus at the center of it all Jesus at Jesus at the center of it all from beginning to from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus 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 nothing else
be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all about you From my heart to the heavens Jesus, be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all about you From my heart to the heavens Jesus, be the center It's all about you Yes, it is Yes, it's all about you so much that he gave to us what we could not do for ourselves. You do understand that because of our rebellion of our four parents, Adam and Eve, we had a sin problem. And that sin problem passed from generation to generation to generation. 
But thanks be to God. Ah, you must have been born saved, but, but thanks be to God. He did not want us to wallow in the worst of ourselves. And so he sent his son Jesus on a rescue mission to redeem us, to take back from the enemy what did not belong to him. The Bible says, for by grace we have been saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not works, lest any man should. So we began this in-person Holy Week. I want you to consider what Christ considered when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. We often want to celebrate Calvary and we have a demonstrative expression because he got up. But there's some things that occurred before he went to Calvary. Would you kindly say Gethsemane? Lest I forget Gethsemane. The Bible says that he took his closest with him and said, listen, I'm going through some stuff and would you join me? And come on, Jesus, they went. But the Bible also records that they got tired and they fell. Uh, as they fell asleep, Jesus was wrestling with his assignment. And the scripture records that he began to sweat as if it was blood. He did not literally sweat blood. That is not historically correct. But he encountered this medical condition that causes your sweat pores and the sweat glands to uh, cause sweat to come out that looks as if it is blood. And it comes from an enormous and incredible amount of stress. This shows you that while Jesus was fully God, he was also fully, fully man. But I wonder what else he was praying all night. And I thought about, man, was his prayers like mine? Oftentimes my prayers is about the little G God of me, myself, and Lord help me, Lord give me, Lord protect me, Lord shelter me. Then Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, which means that he didn't want to do it. But he said, not me, but, but your will. Yes, yes. God, I'm going to do it even though I don't want to do it. We close our time out together with prayer. I'm going to ask our elders, advisors, and pastors and ministers to come. Would you come Come quickly, please? This is not a time to... I've called your name. Say amen to somebody. Folks looking around, does that mean me? Yep, that means you. And I'm gonna allow you some focus time. What does that mean? We're going to close our time out in prayer. And you, I will invite you to come to any of our prayer. Sister Linda, come on up, one of our prayers. Come quickly, Sister Linda. Uh, 
Miss Teresa, come quickly. And step this way so you're not. You go this way, and I'm gonna be right here. Thank you so much. And so these women, Sister Teresa, come here, in front here. Help you all see that. Allow her to come right there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And so we want you. I love you, Jesus. I work. Japan of the door you just want to tell you Lord I love seed on your behalf Some, sometimes you need somebody to pray for you I don't know about you I do and so they will intercede for you now our time is limited and so we do not expect for our prayers to, to preach through our prayers say amen I need the intercessors to say amen. But we want to pray for you. And as they are praying for you, I am praying for you. So now the altar is open. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you.
such a special way That's why I praise you I lift you up I magnify your name That's why my heart is filled with praise I love you I love you I love you, Lord, today Because you cared for me In such a special way That's why I praise you I lift you up And I magnify your name That's why my heart is filled with praise for Jesus and so we bless your name as we continue on the road to Calvary Father you said be anxious for nothing but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to make our requests known to you and so Father you said if we ask anything in your will Help us not to pray our will, Father, but your will. And Father, as we leave this place, we give you glory. Come on, let's give him glory. Come on, he deserves our worship this evening. We give you all the honor, God. We give you all the praise, oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. With my hand lifted up and my heart filled with praise.
Yes. Yeah. 